In this video, we're going to create a multiple choice interactive component in Figma. So this is a component that's very useful when you want to place multiple choice questions or their prototypes, and it really helps to make your prototype more interactive and believable. You'll be able to check and uncheck each of these individual options and you'll also be able to show and hide individual options and if you'd like to save time creating this make sure to check the link in the description that will take you to my store where you can download the source file for this very interactive component and now let's take a look at how you can create this in figma we're going to start with using the text tool so i'm going to press t on my keyboard and i'm going to type in option text. Now this font is going to be 18 pixels. It's going to be aligned to the left and it's going to be probably demi bold. Um, you can choose whichever font you'd like. Uh, and then also I'm going to be selecting the rectangle tool. So I'm going to press R and create a rectangle that will be approximately this big. So this is going to be our checkbox. So I think around 20 is an appropriate size. I'm gonna create a stroke, align to the center and remove the fill. And also this, I'm gonna probably leave it at black, a black stroke with two pixels stroke size. So move this closer and maybe let's go for 2.5, something like that. We can always adjust later. Anyway, we're gonna select both of these and then press Shift A to create an auto layout from this. This auto layout is gonna be called Option. And we're gonna add some padding over here and we're gonna also add fill. We're gonna make sure we like the paddings that we are setting up. So I think we could go for like 24 on the horizontal, 16 on the vertical, maybe even less. Let's try that. I think that will work. And with a 10 pixel radius rounding off these, of the corners of this component. Speaking of components, I'm gonna actually go over here and turn that into an actual component. And this component is gonna be called option. And let's just, I don't know, let's um, add some more text. So let's say you can replace this. And we also need to make sure that this is responsive, which means if we do this, the text will respond and we can do that over here by selecting the text and then going to horizontal resizing and pressing fill container, right? So this, this is what's gonna happen now. This is the behavior we'd like to see. Um, I think we could, I think we could keep this. This option should be aligned to the top, but we're gonna add this to an auto layout as well and then decrease the vertical padding to three and the horizontal padding to zero. This means that now when we do this, it's gonna, you know, it looks centered while also being aligned to the top. So that's, that's our goal. I'm gonna also select the rectangle and press command option G to create a checkbox frame from this. And also I'm just gonna rename this auto layout so that we know what we are dealing with to checkbox container, right? Just a simple checkbox container. And this is gonna be called text. I'm gonna add a variant and this variant is gonna be called uh, yes. And this one's gonna be called no. And then we're gonna select the whole component and change the property name to state. So this means that we, when we use an instance of this component, we now get a state property with this switcher. It, does nothing right now because we haven't made any changes but we're gonna make them now and um, the first change I'm gonna do is actually create a fill for this checkbox and I'm gonna make it green and I'm gonna also make sure that I'm gonna match the color of the stroke with the fill so now you can see that the thing that we have here the instance of this component with the enabled state is now that's now green Perfect. We're gonna also, I'm just gonna change these. Um, so when we select the whole checkbox frame and then go to selection colors, we can change this to a slightly darker, I think about this seems right. And then I'm gonna use the pen tool by pressing P and creating an actual check like this, right? This is gonna be white and I'm gonna press command X. Actually, first I have to close the color dialog. Now I can press command X, select the checkbox frame and press command V. 
I'm gonna make this larger and it's gonna be two or three pixels. I think three pixels looks better. I'm gonna go over here and just make sure this join is set to rounding like this. So this is what we get. So you can see that now when we actually switch this back and forth, it looks as if uh, this checkbox is being checked, which uh, brings me to actually, I think I'm gonna change this color of this stroke to be gray, so slightly lighter than the initial version. So yeah, this looks good. And also I'm gonna go over to the fill of this uh, state and I'm gonna sample the color from here and make it significantly lighter like this. Right, so this means now when we go back and forth with the state changes, we get not only the changing checkbox, but also fill color. And I'm gonna make this even lighter. I'm gonna make this very, very subtle. So I'm gonna use the S HSL color dialog for that, which means hue, saturation and lightness. And with this state, I'm gonna also hide the fill. So right now, what happens is unchecked state looks like this and checked state looks like this. We are now ready to take this instance of this component, duplicate that 10 times or nine times actually to get 10 items in total and then select all of these and press shift A to add an auto layout. I'm gonna rename this by pressing command R and typing in multiple choice. And also I'm gonna press enter and then set these to fill container. Why are we doing this? Uh, oops, I created a rectangle on accident. Why are we doing this? The reason is so that it's responsive like this. Remember, because we have this individual component basically responsive, then when we create an auto layout from these and set these to fill container, the whole thing is gonna be responsive, right? I'm gonna now go over to the first one, to the first, well, first of all, we have to select this whole thing and turn this into a component, right? Then I'm gonna select the first option and go over here to layer and click on create Boolean property. This Boolean property is gonna be called just simply one. And then with the second one, I'm gonna do two. With the third one, I'm gonna do three. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I'm just gonna do the same thing for all of these. Finally, I'm gonna go over to this option component and go to prototype and then connect the first variant with the second one. So on click change to state on and this is gonna be instant. And I'm gonna do the same with this variant. So this means that now when we click these, when you click this variant, it's gonna switch over to this one and vice versa. I'm gonna also create a text frame that's gonna be 1000 by 600 and I'm gonna name this test frame and now you can actually see now we can actually see our final results so when I go over to assets and search for multiple choice I can click and drag that over here and let's say that we want to create a multiple choice component that will be this wide I'm gonna center with only three options, right? So we're gonna just have three options only. So I'm gonna disable all of these except for the first three. Then I'm gonna type in option one. Then I'm gonna say option two, but this text is going to be slightly longer. And then I'm gonna say option option three. And also within this component, I'm gonna, under auto layout, I'm gonna go for like four, six pixels, right? So we can now change the width of this component instance and we can also do a headline. So let's say a multiple or let's say just question, right? It's gonna be a question, it's gonna be bigger and it's gonna be like this. Now when we launch the prototype, we can test our final result. And this is the final result. When I click an option, it gets highlighted, I can check all these three or I can also uncheck them, making this look highly interactive and overall very immersive, very believable thanks to this interactive component. So 
If we, for example, need to adjust the number of options, uh, we can easily switch these on or off. We can also change the dimensions like this and all of this is gonna be reflected so you can see that this component is also responsive and it's gonna be working very similarly to the actual thing. So that's how you build a multiple choice component in Figma. If you'd like to download this component from my store, go and check out the link in the description. And if you learned something new, if you enjoyed this tutorial, if this helped you, please leave a like, it really helps the channel. And let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these or what would you like to see next. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you as always in the next one.